لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. I'm Eddie, your host, and you're watching The Dean Show. We're here on Can TV 36, Wednesdays at midnight, and if you miss us Wednesdays, the following day, Thursdays at 2 p.m. Now, we're going to be talking about something. There's some confusion out there. We know that design indicates a designer, that there is an orchestrator behind this universe and everything in it. And when you bring the definition of God, who he is, it has to be simple. It can't be confusing. It can't have any ambiguity in it. And we have learned that this creator has sent messengers throughout time, and they've all come with the same message. Submit to the one God. Worship him alone. Your two-year-old can understand that. It's very simple. When we come back, we're going to help clear up some of the confusion. Somehow, this word Trinity got in the mix. Somehow, the one God, some people try to split him up like a pie, make him into three not three, but one. I'm already getting confused, and I think I can add. Now, when we come back, our intention is not to hurt anybody's feelings. Our intention is to clear up the confusion and to deliver the truth. So you don't want to go nowhere. We'll be right back to clear up the confusion here on the Dean Show. Dean, Allah, there's only one God, and Muhammad is his messenger. Allah. La ilaha illallah Allah There's only one God and Jesus was his messenger Allah La ilaha illallah I don't know why I did that. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just to break the ice. And we're back here on the Dean Show and our guest today Kemal, my brother and your brother, how are you? El Meki. Alhamdulillah, exactly. How's it going? Alhamdulillah, wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You, you're back in Chicago. Loving it here. You've been here before? The weather's great. Yeah. <laughs> been here many times before. Yeah. yeah. So we, we have, uh, we've had you on the show before. People can go to thedeanshow.com. You have your own section there, and they can view some of the past shows that we've covered. Now, you heard me introduce a topic about the Creator, about the confusion. God is not the author of confusion. He makes things simple. Human beings make it complicated. So we want to kind of try to unravel things and bring things back to their pure state. We okay. don't want to offend nobody. Great. We just want to deliver the truth. We're going to kick it off with this trinity. What happened here? Where did this come from? Excellent. First of all, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah. I want to first start by, by just relaying now a story of something that happened when I visited Thailand. Now, when I visited Thailand, I was about seven or eight years old, all right? So now I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not trying to be a wise guy when I tell you this story. So I w this is just basically the, the observations of an eight or a seven-year-old. I can't even recall how old I was at the time. Mm -hmm. And I had my siblings, brothers and sisters with yeah. me. Every store you enter in Thailand or, or home or shop, you find they have a small statue of uh, w with their god, and they put food in front of the statue. And then because it was summer, the food would dry up, so they would throw it away, they would put new fresh food. This might happen twice, three or four times a day, depending on what they put, how it dries up. And they do it again the next day, a number of times a day, and they keep doing it multiple times per day for many, many years. So some of them for 50, 60 years have been changing the food for the idol, for the god, for so long. Now, just the observation of a seven or eight year old, we used to, me and uh, with my brothers and sisters, we'd look at them and we'd laugh. We would say, don't they realize that he hasn't ever eaten? Don't they ask him when you take the dry food away, you know, you haven't taken a bite in the last 40 or 50 years. This is what we were saying back yeah. then. It's not because, now this is my point behind this story. It's not because the seven or eight year old was smarter than the 60 year old who is constantly changing the food for his entire life. It's simply that the seven or eight year old was viewing the incident from outside of what we call the box. Because the person changing the food is inside the box. The box is a, f a frame of mind, a thought process. Mm -hmm. You believe certain things about it, and because you look at it from within the box, you don't see what's wrong with it, you see? Now, let me take the viewers to something that they might have looked at from outside of a box. On the Discovery Channel, they, they, there's a clip where there's this man taking care of a temple where there it has thousands and thousands of rats yeah. in India. 
Mm -hmm. And basically, he believes, obviously, that these are reincarnated souls and so on and so forth. So he feeds them and, and he sits on the floor. And you've probably seen the clip. These rats are all over his head, his shoulder, and then just thousands of rats. Mm -hmm. Now, because he is inside the box, he sees himself taking care of the souls of his reincarnated, you know, I don't know what you call them, brothers, sisters, what have you. But because we view it on the Discovery Channel outside of the box, to be honest, and I'm, again, I'm not trying to be funny, we just see a guy with a bunch of rats on his head. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest. Yeah. Because we're viewing the incident from outside of the box. Outside the box. There was one of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may Allah uh, send his peace and blessings and extol uh, upon him. He, his name was Amr ibn al-Jamuh. And he had an idol. And the first thing he would wake up in the morning, he would go to this god made of wood and he would pray to it. His sons became Muslims and they wanted him to see that this is just a wooden statue. So the first day, they woke up early and they threw it in the trash. So he was really upset and he swore, if I found who did this to the idol, I, you know, I'll hurt them and do this and that to them. So he brought it, washed it, oiled it, and put it in its place again. The second morning they woke up before him, they threw it in the trash again. So he was so irate. He said, if I find out who's doing this to you, I will destroy them. Third morning or third, third day, they took it and threw it in the dump. One narration says they tied it to the carcass of a dead dog. So he went looking for the God again, and this is a God that's supposed to bring him good, mm -hmm. push away harm from him. He saw it in the dump, tied to the carcass of a dead dog. He looked at it. He said, if you, and actually the, the second night what happened, he put a sword. He hung a sword over the neck of the statue of yeah. this God and said, if they come to throw you in the trash, defend yourself. Yeah. Third day he finds it attached to the body of a dead dog. He looks at it and he says, by Allah, if you could defend, if you could do any good for your own self, if you could do any good, you would have defended your own self. You would have done good for your own self, pushed harm from your own self. If you can't do it for your own self, how can you do it for me? What happened in this story is that his sons got him to step outside of the box. I don't know if you paint or you draw, yeah, but when you draw, mm -hmm. they teach you to step back from your painting or from what you're drawing yeah. just to get another look at it. Because sometimes when you're looking at something from up close, it's crooked, but you can't see it. Like when you write on a blackboard, your line is crooked, but you can't see it when you're up close. But when you step away, now you can really see very what clearly. Accomplished. Yeah. So this is what we need people to do. People need to step outside of the box for a moment and look again, take another critical, unbiased and analy analytical look at what they're doing and what they believe in. Does, does it make sense when you step out of the box? And now this is... This is the introduction before we start talking about the Trinity. Mm -hmm. Because the Trinity, as much as some people on earth firmly and strongly believe in it, they are, they're, I believe actually nobody really understands how it works. The concept of something, the three things that are one, even though they are physically separate items. And we don't have anything on earth that can be described in that similar manner. So what happens is, Sometimes people need to just take a pause and step back and look at their and what they're believing in. Does it make sense when you take a step back or not? We did this one time. We had a discussion with five uh, missionaries, and they were in charge of teaching Bible study at our university in Virginia. Yeah. And we started by getting them to think outside of the box. So we asked a simple question. The question was, is the Trinity three in one or one in three? And basically, there were five missionaries, and they were teaching Bible study. They should know the Bible very well, but they were quiet. They were all looking down and thinking. Was it three and one or one and three? And I let them keep thinking. They kept thinking and kept thinking and kept thinking. And in the end, I had to give them the answer. I said, obviously, you believe it's three and one. Because if you say one and three, you're admitting to worshiping three gods. Suddenly, all of them start saying, yes, it's, you're, you're right. You're right. Yes, absolutely. You're right. Expound on that for a second. How did you... Uh, clarify this, how do they worship three gods if they said one and three? Because if they say we worship one God who is in three different places, they're admitting to one, two, three different yeah. gods. The easier thing is to say we have three. There are three Godheads, but they're all one. And then they unite as one. Yeah, if you end with this, the word one, you still have one God. But, but if here, you end with the word here you're three... you're ending in three. Yeah. yeah. But why would... They, they know this. Most Christians know it's three and one. Everyone knows this about Trinity. But they were thinking for so long because they never considered what one in three meant. They never thought of that. Mm. So that got them to step outside of the box. A second question we asked, again, got them to think about this from in a way they never looked at it before. We asked them this, that there are three gods, God the Father, 
This is back when Jesus was on earth. God, so according to you, God the Son on earth, God the Spirit, wherever the Spirit was. Then God the Son dies for three days. During those three days, how many gods were there? That would be Jesus, peace be upon yes. him, the Son. So according, yeah. So when Jesus died for three days, the third Godhead according to them, how many gods were there? So now you either have to say two, because three minus one is two, or you have to in still insist on one, which means one plus one plus one is one, mm -hmm. and one plus one is still one. Yeah. Or you have to say two. So this becomes a problem. So we asked them this question, and it was difficult for them to answer because they never considered that. What does that mean? And then some started to say, well, he, he went up somewhere else. And, but then, but then the, the gospel said that he had died for three days, you know, that he will be resurrected on the third day and so on and so forth. So it caused a problem. And it got people to think outside of the box. How could this be that one plus one plus one is one and one plus one is still one? And as one person tried to, to be a little crafty, he said, well, one times one times one equals one. What do you say to this? Uh, well, <laughs> what we say to it is that when you're adding three different things, you don't multiply by one. If I give you, you know, three $100 bills, you're not going to say one times one times one. That's $100 on the table. Because if that's the case, I want to do business with you and mm. I want to borrow a lot of money from you and I'm going to give it back to you yeah. <laughs> using your logic. Yeah. See, we don't accept this kind of logic mm. when it comes to things in this life. So why do we accept this kind of explanation when it, when it applies to the Creator? You see? So then, I'll tell you uh, another time, I sat down with someone and he was a very honest man. I asked him very quickly, look, how does this Trinity thing work? And he was a very honest man. He said, look, nobody really knows how it works. He was actually a, a pastor, head of his church. And he said, nobody really knows how it works. So then the next question was, why, why would Allah reveal something that you can't understand and link it to your salvation? Say that again. Why would, the, why would God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, reveal something to you that you can't understand, which is Trinity. Yeah. And link Trinity to your salvation. Let's hold it right there. Okay. We're going to take a break, and then you're going to tell us the rest of the story. We'll be right, right back. You have to pray as if everything depends on Allah, and it does. But you must work as if everything depends on you, and it doesn't. That's my point. You see what I'm saying? And I don't like that. I don't like us sitting here. What are you waiting for? What are we waiting for right now? What are we waiting for all these people to come to Islam? What are we waiting for? What are we waiting for right now? When are they going to come? They're going to come and log on, bring these people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in our hand the ability to do it. Now do your job. Back here on the Dean Show, let's continue on right from where we left off. Why would the creator of the heavens and earth, Allah, go ahead. Okay, and, and, and I just want to preface this by saying that I know... I'm not trying to be insulting to anyone. I'm going to give you actual discussions that I've had with pastors and people who are in, like either they were missionaries or people who teach, you know, Bible study or they were heads of churches. Real and situations yes. that happen with real people. These are real situations, not anything where we're trying to ridicule another faith because in Islam we're commanded to obey, uh, to like respect uh, all religions and respect the followers of all other faiths. So we're not trying to be funny here, not trying to make fun of anybody. This is an actual discussion that happened. I asked a man, he's the head of his church, okay? How does the Trinity thing work? He said, no one really knows how it works. So it's, but, but yet, believing in Trinity is linked to your salvation. So I asked him, why would God reveal something that you can't understand and then link it to your salvation? That's like me telling you, hey, Eddie, you know what? I've got some funding for you to, so you can do you know, your show and everything. It's $20,000, but you need to levitate in the air for half an hour doesn't make sense. I can't, you can't do it. Yeah. So why would I give you the reward or link your reward to something you can't do? Uh -huh. Why would God link your salvation to a concept that nobody understands? Mm -hmm. Nobody understands it. I mean, this is a pastor telling me no one understands it really. No one can truly explain it. But now if they come with these explanations about the egg and the yolk, the water, and all these other things that people might come up. They're, they're all analogies that once we... Like, well, like uh, the egg basically is saying that the egg is composed of three ingredients, but it's one egg. Yeah. But the, uh, the problem is that when you physically separate the ingredients, it's not an egg anymore. You know, if you see the white on the floor, you're not going to think that's, that's, you won't know what it is actually. Yeah. So it's not called an egg. So the same thing, the, the, the triune gods were physically separate. So you can't call them one. They're not even in one location, mm -hmm. you know. What about the water? 
uh, with the water, water ice yeah that it's solid liquid gas or ice liquid and and yeah. and, ga and vapor and but the problem is again this is an example of one in three mm -hmm. not three in one yeah as we had agreed that so trinity is three in one uh -huh. so you can't give an example of one in three water which is one thing in three different states yeah. to explain one in uh, three in one mm -hmm. it doesn't it doesn't work out yeah so w you might ask well there are many things we don't know about god i mean we don't know everything about God, so why can't we not know about the Trinity? No, because Trinity is linked to your salvation. Take an example now in Islam. In Islam, you'll find the things that are essential to you going to paradise are very easy to understand, right? For example, one of the things that I find like quite uh, complicated in Islam is Islamic finance. Okay, mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever looked into it. Quite a very tricky, very complicated, very yeah. intricate. Imagine to get to paradise in Islam, you had to understand Islamic finance. That would be a nightmare. Yeah. Paradise would be empty. <laughs> but to get to paradise, you have to understand a very easy, simple concept. Like you said in the in introduction, a two-year-old can understand it. There is one God. That's it. That's it. Hey, do we need night, night classes for that? That's it. No. There's one God. That's the end of the story. We don't need to explain anything. Any other number you need to explain. How they're two, how they're three, how they're seven. You need an explanation. But one God, you don't need an explanation for mm -hmm. that. So it can't be that, well, we don't understand many things about God, therefore Trinity is one of those things. No, Trinity is linked to your salvation. It has to be easy to comprehend. The simple man in the street has to be able to understand the message that is linked to his or her salvation. So, so then he, he did kind of start to go down the route where saying, you know, well, it's actually a mystery. You know, it's very mysterious and God works in mysterious ways. And as you quoted earlier, you know, it says in the Bible that God is not the author of confusion. Mm -hmm. So where would this mystery come from if God didn't author the confusion? And so just by asking these questions now, the man was beginning to see, to, to step outside of the box, you know, and see that this can't be the case. And I actually asked him a question. And again, I'm, trying to, I'm going to try to quote exactly what I said to him and what he said to me. I, to, I asked him, I'm not asking you which one you prefer, which one you like more, which one you love. I'm asking you which makes more sense to you. The concept of God in Islam, that there's only one God that's worthy of worship. He has no partner, no children, no relatives, nobody gives birth to him and he doesn't give birth to anyone. Or the concept of God in Christianity, the triune God specifically, who is... Th Three in physical, different physical locations, but it's still one. One of them dies instead of becoming two. There's still one, which is easier to comprehend. And I quote the man, the pastor, the leader of his church. He said, the one that is more intellectually satisfying is the Islamic version. Now, did he continue on that path of worshiping God as three parts but one in the Trinity, or did he come around to accepting? No, he, he continued. He's the, the why, 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 he, why do people just continue to do this? Is it just more based off emotion and just habit now? It, yeah, it's a lot of things. Like sometimes, uh, and I've actually met people who said, yeah, I, I like what you're saying, and it makes more sense to me, and I'm more comfortable with it. But this is who I am, or this is what my parents were, and, I can't, and, and I'm comfortable this way. You know, many people don't want to leave the comfort zone. Many times people know that it's better for them to stop doing something, and they continue. Let's take the easiest example, smokers. Yeah. They know they should stop, but they keep going. Yeah. So it applies, and it can be... This is a really good example. I had actually a situation where the gentleman, before I can finish the sentence, he basically finished it for me, that he knows that it kills so many people. He knows, he actually said that he went to the class and he saw the, the, the lungs at their worst point mm -hmm. where it's black, and even the professor who was teaching the class went outside with him to have a smoke. <laughs> wow, after all that. <laughs> after yeah? all that. So, so sometimes there, there are many different things that pull on the individual yeah. to not make the change, even if they feel this is the right change, uh -huh. you know. And you know, like I said, there are a thousand and one different reasons. Yeah? So, so th that's, you think that's one of the main ones? It's just now it's who I am. This is what I do. It, it just, and, I and got to do it. For some people also, you cannot offset 50 years of belief with 10 minutes of explanation, albeit even if it's excellent explanation, yeah. you can't offset 50 years of what I used to be. So, and, and in the end, you know, ulti the ultimate uh, guidance is in the hands of Allah, of course. C continue on, giving us some, some more examples. We'll be right back. I just want to say, very simple message. He is the maintainer. One of the, the beautiful preserver. things about our religion of Islam is, is the, the emphasis the on direct ritual and prayer to God directly. Is there is no intermediary. The lights 
will go on after the party, and the party will end. It's very simple and very clear. There are no superstitious rituals, no strange incantations. Time is running out. We might not make it till tomorrow. And this is something that we need to think about. Uh, of, have you spoken to other people? This was a minister or a deacon or this person that you were talking about? Yeah, yeah he was like, uh, he was the, the pastor of his church. Yeah. Uh, there was another time, and, and again, I'm going to try to only quote actual things that happened to me personally yeah. so that no one thinks either we're making things up or trying to be insulting or anything. Uh, one time, and this, this discussion happened over the, the radio, it was a live on, on this show, and, and I called into the show and um, a, a minister called into the show. And basically, my argument was that, you know, Jesus actually was not uh, divine, was not a God. He never said He was, all right? He never said He was. And, and this is what we tell people, look, Go buy the Red Letter Bible. You, you're familiar with that? Yes. It's a regular Bible, but everything spoken by Jesus is in red ink. Okay, go buy it. It's not very expensive. Just go buy the Red Letter Bible. Come home. Read the letters in red only. You're saying this on the radio show now? Yes, I said this on the radio show, and I'm saying it right yeah. now to the viewers. Go and read the red letters only, what Jesus said, and just close the book. Don't look at what anybody else said. Did, do you walk away with Jesus telling you, I'm God, you need to worship me, I'm divine? You don't. You only get that message from other people hinting towards it or, or, explicit, or explicitly saying it. But when you look at the message of Jesus, the Jews sent priests and Levites to him, or when, when they asked him, you know, what is the first commandment? He repeated word for word what Moses said before him. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Does he ever once say, people, you need to bow down, kneel and worship me? He said, and worship the Father who is in heaven. The woman called him good teacher. He says, why do you call me good? It is only the Father who is good. So he's, and, and he's t many times he'll say, my Father who has sent me. Go to Bible.com and look for those words. Sent, my Father sent me. And see how many times he says, I was sent. Just like all the prophets that were sent with a message. He gave many lectures, speeches. He preached the Sermon of the Mount. Many of these famous like speeches and he taught in people's homes, along the roadsides. How come not once does he clearly say, listen people, clearly and explicitly, I am God, you need to worship me, I'm the third Godhead. What do I have today, Eddie? We have hints to the triune God. We have things that say, well, this is an indication that Jesus was God. But look, that's not acceptable. Mm -hmm. Let's be realistic now. What about the word Trinity? Is it in the Bible? No, the word Trinity is not in the Bible. Mm -hmm. But I'm willing to let that argument slide, yeah. okay? They might say, well, the word Trinity is not in the Bible, but there are hints to the Trinity. Look, hint, a hint is not acceptable. Suppose now I give you a book, all right, that says, you know, learn French in 30 days. You read the whole book, there's nothing about French. Does that make sense to you? The cover says French. Yeah. You read the whole thing, there's nothing about French. If Jesus was the Son of God, sent to die for people's sins, and He should be worshipped, He would have made that message very, very clear. Mm -hmm. There's no way that you would sit with Him and listen to his lectures and not walk away with that message very clearly. Yeah. You think he would yeah. hint to that? So, yeah, it doesn't make sense. You're dying now and you need someone to save you. You're not going to hint that you need help. You're going to scream out help. Definitely. It doesn't make and sense. And the guy who's there, the, the lifeguard or the coast guard, he's yeah. not going to hint that he's some fisherman. He's going to say, look, we're here and this is our job to help yeah. you. So he wouldn't hint with, with all these sermons. He's just hinting to Trinity. That's not acceptable. And this is salvation. This is our the life, most important the message. The most important thing. The most important message uh -huh. can't be a hint. Can't be vague. It can't be vague, and it can't be a mystery. And so that's what we were saying. That it cannot be that you look throughout the whole Bible, not once, and underline the words clearly and explicitly. Does Jesus say, "Look, I need to be worshipped. I'm the, I'm the third Godhead." So what do we have? Hints towards something of of the divinity of Jesus. But like I said, hints are not acceptable. So you have things like, uh, I am the Word, or I and the Father are one, or in the beginning, or the, there were three, there are three that bear record in heaven, like this is in the yeah. beginning of the Gospel of John, which the footnote tells you was added in the 16th century. So this is, so this is a lot of times people use, well, there were three that bear record in heaven. But this was added. You look at the footnotes, it's not a secret. It was added later on. I mean, quite recently, actually. Mm -hmm. So... It can't be that the most important message is never clearly spoken about. It's just impossible. Use not, there's not a textbook on earth that says on the cover, this is what I'm about, and you read the whole thing, you can't find it clearly. 
it has to be clear. Now how do you, how do you tap? We won't go into specifics because we don't have that much time. But for the people who will come adamantly and passionately and full of emotion and zeal, and they'll quote a dozen, half a dozen verses, and they'll try to justify the Trinity. It, it's so interesting, really, that as as much whatever is quoted, you can quote something similar as as a similar. Uh, like passage or description about someone besides Jesus. But here they won't take it literally. For example, John 3.16, right? The, the God, or Jesus being God's only begotten Son. Very popular verse. So the word begotten here is what sets him apart from anyone else. Being the, because you know, the believers are children of God, yeah. right? According to the Gospel of John. But here, the begotten Son is what makes him separate and, and apart from everyone else. Yeah. But we have in, in Psalms chapter 2, verse 6, God speaks directly, directly to David. And he says, you are my son. This day I have begotten thee. Now people don't take this literal. We have the word begotten here, spoken directly from God to, to David. And yet people don't see him as one of the, the sons of God. They don't take it literally here. Yeah. But here they do. But, but that's not fair. And that's not how it works. This is a really good example. I mean, what, what do you say to this now? What, what is the excuse that someone will give you why they take it literally in... For Jesus, peace be upon him, but here they don't. Because what they do is they try to attach it to other things that were said by Jesus. Mm -hmm. Going back to the story of the, uh, the minister that called in on the show, he said, Jesus clearly said, I am God, because Jesus said, I am the Word. I was, and so they were, where everyone was quiet. So then he had to explain how this means I'm God. He says, when you go to Genesis, so now this is 900 pages earlier mm -hmm. in the Old Testament, so you got to somehow link it. You got to link. So you got to go all the way back to the Old Testament to Genesis, the first book. Then it says, "In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God." And Jesus now said, "I am the Word." That means that's Him. Mm -hmm. He was with God. So then I asked him a question. I said, "Listen," and and again, I'm telling you exactly what I told the man. I said, "I'm going to take the Bible right now and go out into the street and talk to people who are Christian." Okay, and maybe they're not very knowledgeable about the Bible or well versed, but I'm going to open it to that page and show everyone in the street. Look, Jesus said, I am the Word. What do you get from that? What do you think the average person in the street will understand from I am the Word? Oh, that means Jesus was the third Godhead and he needs to be worshipped. You can't get all that information from this until you make the 900 page jump to the beginning and force it into that link. Force it. Force it. And that's why when you tell them David was a begotten son of God, they don't link it. Be but they forced any other link because, they, because the mindset is to believe, the frame of mind is that Jesus was the begotten Son of God. So even if there's something hinting to anything, they will look at it that way. For example, where it says, I and the Father are one. Now, what does that mean? One in purpose or one literally? Obviously, it's not literal because the Father is in the heavens and He was on earth. So what does it mean? Or when He says, I and, there's no way to the Father except through me. You know, as a Muslim, that makes perfect sense to you. Yeah. Jesus said, the only way to the Father is through me. It makes perfect sense. If God sent a prophet to earth to guide you, are you going to bypass him and find your way to God? No. And bypass that prophet? Mm -hmm. It's got to be through him. Yeah. He was sent to guide you. That's yeah. all it means. But when, when you're in the mindset of believing Jesus was the Son of yeah. God, everything that hints to it, you will take it as such. Tell us now, we had said earlier that we sincerely, we want to deliver the truth. We're not trying to step on no toes, nobody, hurt nobody's feelings. Now that somebody is being sincere, open-minded, humble-hearted, and they say, you know what, this man makes sense. He looks at his wife, the wife looks at the husband and say, hey, this is making sense. What do they do now? Deliver. But y you know what? Where do they go from here? Talk to us. Deliver the true concept of God and some okay. advice to him. Excellent. First of all, I, I do want to say that the, the message of one God is extremely consistent throughout the Bible, Old and New Testament included. In the Old Testament, so many times he will talk about, or God will warn people of taking others in worship besides him. All the prophets would tell people to worship one God only. And God in the Old Testament says, I am your Lord, besides me there is no God. Suddenly, in the New Testament, we discover that there are three supposedly. Now this actually is, is a jump and a diversion from what we have learned. We've been learning all these thousands of years of the prophets saying there's one God only. There's no other God. You're, the, the Lord your God is one Lord. Suddenly we hear three. But then Jesus himself didn't say there's three. He said worship the Father. He said 
worship God. He tells people to worship God. He said there's only one Lord. Same thing that, that, Jesus, uh, that Moses said before him. So what happens now is you're starting to see the consistent message of all the prophets sent by God, the consistent message of Jesus. Read the le red letters. Don't take my word for it. And this is the message of the prophet that came after Jesus as well, the prophet Muhammad وسلم, in Arabia, who also come, came and called people to worship only one God, he, who has no partner, who has no children, who has no relatives or anything of that sort. Nobody gives birth to him and he does not give birth. And also didn't change the basic message of the Ten Commandments and everything stays consistent. So you're actually following what would be the true message of Jesus by accepting the message of his brother and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Thank you very much Zakim for being with us and helping to make these things very clear. It's very simple. One God. And we cleared up the confusion about the Trinity. It's nowhere in the Bible. None of the messengers taught it. Neither did Jesus, peace be upon him, who is so beloved to our hearts. He is a mighty messenger. He's not a son of God. He's not God. But he is one who taught the people the same way Moses did in Abraham. And the last and final messenger sent to mankind, they taught the same message. Submit to the one God. Submit your entire self to his will, not your will. In simple English, do what God wants you to do on his terms. We'll see you next time. Tune in every week to the Dean Show. We're here at the same time, same channel. Until then, salam alaikum. Peace be unto you. No speech is better than to do that. To call people to Allah and to do the work. No speech is better. No, nothing is better than that. Is it true that if one person on the... Allah giving you the ability to guide someone with Allah's permission, the Creator's permission that is better than everything in this world. Better than the whole world and everything that's in it. In, in another narration, it's better than the best of wealth. But if we really felt that, Eddie, would we not be give, out giving dawah? And this is something that we encourage all the MSAs, all the dawah organizations, the masjids to get this. We want to print more. We give these to the non-Muslims for free, for free, for free. We want our brothers in humanity to become our brothers in faith. It's cold, it's late, everybody's sleeping. I arise and ask Allah to forgive me. Oh Allah, you see, oh Allah, you know, all the sins I do. I turn to you to forgive my sins and my heart. I'm your sinful slave, you're my loving Lord, I'm the one who runs away, oh Allah guide me.